Okay, let's go ahead and find the domain for this particular function here. And uh, as we do so, obviously we need to um, recall or review what this uh, word means, domain, when we're talking about functions. Now, functions in uh, algebra and in mathematics is a huge topic. So at this point, if you're looking at finding the domain of a function, you obviously, one, you need to know what uh, the domain uh, uh, is, okay? And if you know what the domain is, or if you're studying the domain, then you probably want to know something about the range. But even beyond that, or before that, you need to know what a function is, just in general. What's the definition of a function? Then as you continue to study functions, uh, obviously we need to know what the domain and range is, but we need to also be able to find the domain of particular functions. That's what we're going to be focusing in on here. But there's all kinds of additional topics about functions like inverse functions, function operations, composite functions, graphing of functions. So you really need to embrace this topic uh, functions. And uh, after this video here, if you need additional help, I have tons of other videos about functions in my algebra playlist on my channel. But I'm going to give you some quick um, suggestions on functions uh, as we kind of get through or go through this particular video. But here, very specifically, we're going to hone in on this question. We want to find the domain of this function here. So what is the domain? Well, you know, let me ask you that. What do you think it is? Well, you should have a basic idea if you're trying to find the domain of a function. But... Um, Basically, the domain is the set of all input values you can plug into a function, and it's associated with the x uh, variable. So here, we input values into this function. So for example, I can go like f of 3, and I can plug 3 in right here, okay, just as I did, and I would replace uh, this x with 3, and then I would calculate this out, and I would get some sort of output value. So all the input values or everything I can input into this function is collectively called the domain. Now, as I plug in all these input values, I get a set of output values and uh, all those uh, output values is called the range. So the range is dependent upon the domain. Okay, so you have all your input values, you plug them in and you get all your output values is the range and the range is associated with the y value. So we're not going to be talking about the range, obviously, in this video. We're going to focus in on finding all the input values for this particular function. Now, some of you might be saying, well, can we just put any number into this function? Well, not quite, okay? When we're looking at the domain of a function under the set of real numbers, okay, so we're not using complex or imaginary numbers, only real numbers, there are a couple of restrictions that we need to consider. Okay, so it's not like, well, yeah, any number you can plug it to a function. Sometimes that's the case, but uh, in other uh, functions, it's not the case. So we're going to talk about what those restrictions are, and then obviously we're going to uh, do this problem and uh, determine the domain for this particular specific function. Okay, so we're going to get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you want to check out my math help program, I have a link to it in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So let's say you're out uh, studying for the GED, SAT, ACT. GRE, GMAT, Alex, Accuplacer, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like the Praxis exam or nursing entrance exam like the TEAS. There's a ton of exams out there have a lot of math on it. If you don't get to the math on these particular exams, you're not going to pass those exams. So I have a lot of special uh, test preparation uh, math courses. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have uh, your exam, just drop me a line and I'll give you my best guidance uh, or recommendations. Now, I also do a lot with independent learners like uh, homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously, I just help those of you out there that are struggling in your current math class. But one thing that you um, need to do for yourself that I can't do for you that's absolutely critical for math uh, success is note-taking. Okay, so over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take excellent notes almost do uh, excellent all the time, and they're great. So, okay, they do very, very well because they really put the effort into taking notes. And then those students who are like, nah, nah, I don't want to take notes, or 
you know, I like to look at my cell phone or talk to my friends or do my homework for another class. Listen, as a teacher, you see everything. But, you know, uh, way back in the good old 1980s when I was in school, I made all those mistakes. Like I was completely distracted. And if I had a cell phone back in those days, boy, I'm not even sure I would graduate. So I get um, the amount of distraction out there, but it's going to be up to you to remain focused. Okay. If you can't stay focused, you will not be able to do well in mathematics. And the only activity that's going to help you stay focused is note taking. So improve on your notes. If uh, some of you just need to start taking notes, right? So, you know, don't feel bad, just start correcting your current situation. But in the meantime, you probably need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So we want to find the domain. Now, if you think you know what to do, okay, go ahead and pause the video and uh, tinker around with this uh, function and see if you can come up with the domain. But uh, let's get to it. All right, so we're going to find the domain under the set of real numbers. Okay, we talked about that. And the real numbers is all those numbers on the real number line. So here we have 0, we have 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, and all these decimals and fractions, positive, negative, all on this entire uh, number line is the set of real numbers. So we want to find the domain, the allowable values uh, uh, in terms of real numbers can go into a particular function. So whatever our function is, okay, we're going to be plugging in these real numbers, okay, then we're going to, this will be our input again, all right, and then all the set of those inputs is the domain. That's what we're looking uh, to determine, like okay, what numbers can we plug into this function, and then obviously we get these uh, output values, which would be uh, the range. Now, again, some of you might be saying, well, can I just plug in anything into a function? Well, no, okay, there's uh, two conditions when we're talking about the real numbers that you got to stay away from, okay, that that we can't have. So let me tell you the two restrictions that if we have, if you plug in a number into a function and you get any one of these two conditions, then you're going to have problems. So we're going to, let me show you these uh, restrictions right now. The first is, okay, let's see if we have a function like this, like 1 over x. If, when you uh, see a function with a fraction, we can never have 0 end up uh, as a denominator. So for example, in this function, if I go, hmm, let's go evaluate f of zero, that's one over zero. Well, this is a big no-no, okay? You can't do this, right? Because you can never divide by zero in mathematics. So zero is not allowed into this function. So it would not be part of the domain of this function, okay? So that's kind of the first condition. We can never have zero end up as uh, the value of the denominator. Now, the second condition, let me just go and draw a little basic function here, is we can't have a negative value underneath the square root. So here, let's say this is our basic function. Let's say I want to take um, f of negative 4. So I'm going to find the square root of negative 4. Well, uh, some of you out there might be like, oh, well, that's uh, 4 or uh, plus or minus 2i. Okay, if you're familiar with complex or imaginary numbers, and you would be correct. Okay, this is in fact um, the answer. Uh, the square root of negative four is plus or minus two i, but we're, that's complex numbers, imaginary numbers. That's a whole nother number system. Okay, we're not dealing with that. We're talking about the real numbers. Okay, so there is no imaginary numbers in, in terms of the real numbers. Matter of fact, if you go into your calculator and try to take the square root of negative four. This is like a basic calculator. You'll probably see error, okay, because we can't do it, right? There's no two numbers. It's not negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and uh, 2 times 2 is also a positive 4. So there's no two numbers that we can multiply by themselves that gets, gets us back to, um, I'm sorry, uh, negative 4, right? There's just no two numbers that we can do that. So, uh Again, to answer this question, we have to go into another num number system, uh, the complex and imaginary number system. So these are the two main restrictions. We can never end up with a negative value underneath a square root, and we can't have a zero in the denominator. So when you're looking at functions, okay, we have to consider those two restrictions and find values that, that could cause or trigger that uh, uh, these scenarios and then we what we want to do is remove them out of the domain. So let me kind of specifically show you this here Okay, so here is our function 
and we have a uh, fraction going on here, right? We have to really kind of, we have multiple things going on here. So we have a fraction. So the first thing is, we're saying, okay, look, I have this square root. Okay, let's just look at this square root. It's in the fraction. So when we're talking about square roots, they can never be, we can't have a negative number in a square root. So therefore, what does that uh, imply? Well, all the numbers uh, underneath that square root need to be positive, okay? Zero or positive. So x plus 6, whatever this value represents right here, has to be a positive number. So let's write this as an inequality. x plus 6 has to be greater than 0. This means right here we're just using inequalities to state that x plus 6, the value of it, has to be positive. So we're going to say x plus 6, you got to be greater than 0 because that's where all the positive numbers are at. Let's just look at a real number line here. Here is 0. Okay, anything that's greater than zero over here is a positive number, which in fact we could take the square root of. Uh, over here, these are all of our what? Negative values, and we cannot take the square root of these negative values with respect uh, to this function. So x plus 6 has got to be greater than zero. So that's one condition that has to be met for this function. Now, there's another one as well, okay? I can't have x plus 6 be equal to zero. Okay, because if this was equal to zero, let's take a look at that situation. I would have this, okay, if x plus 6 was equal to zero, I would have the square root of zero, which would be zero, so I would have 1 over zero. Again, that's a second restriction. So it's a little kind of confusing because you have two uh, restrictions uh, going on at the same time, but this is, you know, kind of uh, different type of problems that you can face. Okay, it's, you know, in algebra, you're not going to just have one simple prompt. So we can't have x plus 6 be equal to 0, and we can't have x plus 6 be, uh, x, plus this ha x plus 6, excuse me, has to be greater than 0. So let's go ahead and solve this inequality here. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the inequality, and I get x is greater than negative 6. And in here, I just need to know that x plus 6 is, uh, cannot be equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of this uh, uh, equation, or it's not equal to, so I get x cannot be equal to negative 6. All right, so let's just put this on a number line here, and we can kind of see both uh, conditions here very well. Let me draw that a little bit better. All right, so here is 0, and here is negative 6. So here, x has to be greater than negative 6, okay, so graphically that would be all these numbers, and at the same time, x cannot be negative 6, but that condition's being met right here as well. So all of these values right here are okay, okay, these guys are okay to input into our function. So um, in other words, this is the domain, okay, this is the domain. Anything over here, whether it's actually negative 6 or uh, less than negative 6, is bad. It would create a bad situation. Either it would create a negative underneath the square root or a 0, uh, specifically when x is equal to negative 6 uh, in the denominator. So we can't use any of these numbers over here. They're not allowed in, in terms of the set of real numbers. So uh, our domain for this function, okay, let's go back to it again, is going to be all the values that are greater than negative 6. So how can we express that? Well, there's a, a bunch of different ways. You could say the domain, little like a little d, capital D like this, is uh, uh, x is greater than negative 6. That's one way uh, to do it. There's all kinds of different, um, uh, different techniques, different notations that you can use to write this. You can also do it like this. Uh, you can go negative 6 to positive infinity if you're familiar with interval notation. Um, but I'm not as concerned with your uh, the way you actually express the domain. I'm not saying it's not important. You definitely need to be able to do this appropriately, but there are different ways stylistically, if you want to kind of call it that way, to express the, the domain. Okay, But the biggest thing that I want to uh, you know have you understand in this particular problem is what the domain is and why we're looking to find it. So, you know, when we look at this function here, I'm thinking to myself, okay, when I'm trying to plug in something into this function, it has to be greater than uh, negative 6, okay? 
I can't do f of negative 7. That will cause me problems, okay? But I could definitely do f of negative 5, um, f of uh, 1, f of 10, and uh, all these values here, um, these guys here will be part of the domain, and I would have a, an associated output value, which would be part of my range. Okay, so the big takeaways here, again, is knowing the restrictions. Now, some functions, let's just quickly, quickly look at one example. Uh, there'll, there'll be no obvious uh, restrictions. So like f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. So I'm looking at this. Is there a fraction where I can end up with a 0? No. Okay. Is there a square root where I can have a negative? No. So here, in this particular function, the domain is going to be the set of all real numbers. Okay. But not every function is going to look like this. Right. If I throw a little square root into it like this, now i got a whole other different situation. So you got to look at those... Um, uh, conditions to see if they exist in your problem. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little review on uh, finding the domain. I have additional videos on this, by the way, uh, in my algebra playlist. So um, a couple of things here. Uh, watching me do this problem is one thing, okay? And if you like this video, if you understand this video, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, have many, many, many videos organized on various playlists on my channel. But the main thing that I want to express to you is this. Watching me do math is not the same as you learning math. You have to practice this stuff, okay? So uh, a couple additional um, resources. One, you can use my, uh, I have tons of videos on my various um, playlists. Uh, I would look in my Algebra and Algebra 2 uh, playlist on more function, more advanced function problems, if that's kind of where you're at in your studies. But my best math help will always be in my math help program. So if you're really into more advanced functions, you probably want to look at my Algebra 2 course or Algebra 1 course. Okay, so uh, functions, huge topic in mathematics. Finding the domain is uh, essential. Finding the range, a little bit more complex that involves graphing, but we'll get into that in additional videos. All right, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematic adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.